Back at the end of last year, I was in the market for a gold nibbed fountain pen. It would be my first such pen. The previous pens that I've had, I had before then were mostly steel nibbed pens. So looking at the internet and doing a bit of shopping, I noticed that a lot of people would recommend that the first gold nib pen would probably be the Platinum 3776 or even the PTL 5000A. Some people also recommended the Pilot Custom 74. Trouble with those recommendations was at that point of time, the most expensive pen that I had in my collection was actually the M800 Moonman with a bock nib. And that was about 40 US dollars. I had a real um, kind of a mental barrier at the $50 US mark. Uh, to spend that much for a pen would be a kind of a struggle for me. So with that, I went to some other sites, specifically the auction sites out there. And I happened to bump across the Pilot Elite, right? And it, I managed to pick up this pen for $5. It was a kind of a shock to me when I placed a bid and nobody matched my bid. And with shipping, which was like five times more than the price I paid, which was $25, this pen came into my possession for 30 US dollars, uh, which is a bargain, definitely. So this is a Pilot Elite fountain pen. It's not the E95S, which is the you know more commonly known Western version of the pen. Uh, if we were to buy this pen brand new from sites like Amazon, it would cost you about $130, rough or thereabouts, if not more. Uh, in comparison with other pilot pens like the Custom 74, this is, you know, more, more high, it's higher up in the pilot range of fountain pens. So a little bit of history about the Pilot Elite. Uh, this pen, at least the first incarnation of the pen, came out in the late 1960s. And there were a couple of, at least one revision of the pen uh, up to, you know, to get to this current version that you're looking at right now. The previous releases, I understand, might have had 18 karat uh, nibs and it, there were some design differences. For example, uh, this clip looked, it didn't look like this. It looked rather more like the, the Pilot Pig nib, which I showed, um, you know, a couple of videos back. Um, nevertheless, um, I got the pen in my possession, I inked it up and, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit today about, you know, what my thoughts are about this pen. So first thing out of the way, um, lots of people call this pen a pocket pen and, but it's not ex exactly that small. If I were to put my M200 right next to it, it's just slightly shorter than an M200. And if you compare it with a Caveco Sport, you can see that the Caveco Sport is, you know, way shorter, right? So, you know, just bear this in mind if you thought you were getting a very small pen. It, it is a small pen, but it's not absolutely, you know, small like a pocket pen, right? Uh, in terms of some of the features, you get a very plain vinyl, down here on the other end on the barrel it's kind of a flat you know uh, flat end the clip which is the thing that you know I was kind of drawn to when I selected this pen it's a very plain and simple design some people might call it boring but I find it very elegant right if you were to kind of look at um, the steel elite it definitely looks more streamlined uh, and simple compared to that pen. And we'll talk about this pen later on. Um, it has the word elite down here, which signifies that this is actually the pen from Japan. The Western um, E95S actually has just a logo like an E, you know, at, the, at this area of the pen. 
So clip wise, back to the clip, it's it's quite a secure clip. Uh, in the middle of the, the, the pen, you get this pretty white silverish. Um, I'm not, I'm never sure whether or not, because this is a second hand pen, I didn't know whether it, it came like this silverish finish or, you know, maybe it was worn out by the previous owner. But it's pretty large silverish band down here uh, with this interesting cutout. Um, clip inside the clip you get some spring uh, you know little spring uh, loaded uh, clips down here which means that when you you know kind of close the pen it's a very nice positive and very smooth action uh, the clip itself isn't very heavy which kind of aids to the balance of the pen so this pen is probably one of the most balanced pens that I have it's balanced pretty much at midpoint, right? Which means that when you're using the pen, it's very, very comfortable. And being that this is not exactly a very heavy pen in the first place, you could write with this, you know, literally like the whole day. The, the area down here, obviously there isn't a kind of a very obvious section area, but this area down here, the grip area, it's very comfortable to hold. And if you're one of those that likes to hold the pen, you know, further up or lower down, you know, it's fine. Looking at the, the actual, the inside of the pen, which is the, the barrel end, you know, it didn't, because I bought a secondhand uh, pen, did not come with a converter or a cartridge. Uh, I just put in a CON40 down here. Just bear in mind that it's a very short area down here. It's super short. You probably can't fit in many of the longer, you know, converters or cartridges. This area of the pen is, um, by the way, the black portions of the pen are made of some, some sort of resin. It's a very smooth, pleasant feeling um, plastic. My pen, you know, has, a, has this, this part of the, the band um, that's loose, right? I, you know, it probably doesn't come with it being this loose, right? I, ha I have to kind of glue back this, this area down here. And you will notice that the screw threads here are metal, which is a sign of a, typically it's, it's a sign of a higher end or more expensive pen. Inside this barrel, it's plastic, so it's metal on plastic. Okay. Um, looking at the nib, the nib is, is kind of plain. Um, it just says down here, pilot, um, trying to get it focused and it's a F, which is a fine. And it says 14 K down here. There's a little oval, oval shaped, uh, breather hole on top. And on the bottom part, you get like a, a little moon shape. I suppose it's a filler hole, right? I'm not sure whether that that's the filler hole or this little hole at the back. Down here is the filler hole, but uh, so comparing this pen with the the steel one, the steel one is definitely if you look at this, it's definitely slimmer, right? Um, and the design of the nibs are very different, right? This one is a is a true hooded nib. This is more like a like a fingernail type uh, of nib. Right, um, this particular pen, the steel one came with uh, like a bulb type uh, converter. And we'll do a little bit of writing um, now. Sorry, I put this into the wrong cap. So I have both pens loaded up with die mines, um, deep, dark blue. So I got this from Cult Pens. It's one of their special edition uh, colors. So starting with the with the 14K um, pen. So this is the pilot. Sorry, there's a hard start. And this is the fine. 
and you know, a little bit of writing. So it's it's no that's not much line variation. It's it's just fine all the way. It's not a very soft nib, and the, you know it's moderately wet. I wouldn't call it very dry or very wet, but it's just a moderate kind of uh, ink flow. Um, so basically, as you can see down here, there isn't much. I'm trying to press down. There isn't much line variation with this pen. It's a smooth nib. It feels nice, right? Um, but the, the, the steel one actually has a little bit more character. So this is the steel Elite. So this is also inked up with Diamine Deep Dark Blue, right? So this is the fine as well. Sorry, writing is not very good today, but this pen is, it, it's actually a little bit more, it's softer in a way, and it has kind of more line variation. So basically, if I were to kind of push the nib like this, you can see that it's, you know, I'm not sure whether it comes out on the, on the paper, right? You can actually see that uh, the difference between the two nibs. It's also smooth. It's probably just a hand, you know, not as smooth as the gold one, right? But it's not that far away from it. So, which which kind of brings me to the question after I bought this pen. I mean, um, I wanted my first uh, gold nipped pen. Did I get what I wanted? So, in a way, yes. I got to try what a gold nipped pen was was about. Uh, was it like the wow moment whereby you know I was blown away? Not, I mean, not really. The the gold pen actually has kind of a very delicate feel uh, to writing, which is missing from the steel one. Um, you know, so if that's what you are kind of looking for, that kind of delicacy that gold bring, brings to writing, you know, maybe you will be pleased with this. Um, I was pleased with this pen though. I mean, I, th I think it's uh, obviously at the price that I paid for it, it was definitely a good value. Um, would I buy this pen at that full retail price that the E95S is at right now? Probably not. Um, you know, I mean, if you know, I, I look at prices right now on some of the sites, the prices of these pens are actually steadily going up. Maybe it's the vintage, the, the pursuit of vintage um, that's going on right now. But um, if you can get one of these at a good price, I would definitely say go for it. Um, however, be aware if this was your first uh, gold nipped pen, you know, you know, you might not get all those characteristics which you would you kind of uh, link with gold. Uh, softer pen, smoother pen, things like that. You know, you might not get get it. Um, you know, by buying a gold nib pen. So, um, I hope you found this this comparison or this review useful. Uh, it's been a long time coming. I've featured this pen in a lot of my other previous videos before. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and hope you subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much. Bye.